Um, I leave that up to, you know, the press, the media, and the fans, you know, do all that voting and kind of stuff. I mean, uh, I love what I do, you know what I mean? Uh, I've been, you know, I've had un, unfortunate mishaps, you know, earlier in my career, you know, whether, uh, you know, it be injury, whether it be, you know, uh, just the situation I was in on that particular team. And basically instead of, you know, sitting around soaking about it and telling people, you know, I could have did this, or I could have did that, you know, I just found found a way to stick with it, found a way to, uh, you know, to continue my dream. So, uh, you know, there's certain things in my career that I have not obtained yet. And uh, as far as I'm concerned, you know, it's, it's just, you know, it's just the beginning of my career. And I'm just, you know, I'm just going to continue to, to play ball, play, you know, play for my teammates, play for this city, and uh, I think good things will happen. Well, well, I know, I know, I, I should say, I know good things will happen. You know, I, I think this city, you know, uh, they've, they've been wanting, you know, they've been wanting uh, a few things, you know, badly, and I know that this team wants, you know, those things badly, and I think together it's just uh, the mentality is going to work, and there will be, and people, everyone will be successful. Well, Tom, being from the East Coast, you know what I'm saying, especially being from a hard, hard environment of, you know, the Broadway area of Jersey, you know what I'm saying, it's a fast-paced mentality over here in the Tri-State area, going to a, a laid-back, calm area of San Diego. How do you transform that going into the locker room, either being the clown of the locker room or being the serious, stern, you know, getting the guys in order? You know, how how do you transport that from the East Coast to the West Coast, bringing that to the locker room week in, week out, game after game? Um, I mean, it's, de- I mean, it's definitely different. On the East Coast, I'm probably more of a, a laid-back guy. You know, uh, I'm, I'm a very laid-back, casual individual. But, uh, at time, you know, I like to have a good time, joke around, have fun. You know, I think uh, all my teammates would definitely say that I clown around, you know, often. You know, but uh, at the same time, I know when to get serious. I know when, you know, uh, I mean, for whatever reason, you know, when I cross that white line, you know, uh, it's all about business, you know. So I really, you know, you ask any of my teammates, I'm sure they'll tell you that one of the first things they'll say is that I'm a jokester. I play around a lot, but at the same time, I could be I could be a big bully. So, you know, kind of they both go hand in hand, you know. With me anyway, but you know, the whole East Coast, the whole East Coast thing, you know that that's in my blood. That's you know that's why I, you know that's why I was raised. So you know you can't really get that out of me. I think I wear hoodies everywhere I go in San Diego, regardless of the temperature. <laughs> <laughs> Is there one play in your career where you know? You, you sit there and you keep it on the DVR at all times and gather gather the kids around and say, hey, look what I did here. I mean, I, I remember uh, at least one play where you where you pushed uh, pushed the guard or the center right back into Peyton Manning and, and just uh, and completely owned him that one play. But is there one play in your career where you're going to keep it on VHS, DVD, and and uh, all forms of media just just to play it and wax uh, wax nostalgic about it? Um, I don't think that play has happened yet, to be honest with you. You know, uh you know, uh I think that I'm not really I'm not the type of person that like collect, you know, uh, I know there's, you know, certain athletes, you know, certain guys, uh certain professional athletes that, you know, keep a lot of memorabilia, you know, whether of, of other athletes, you know, of themselves, news articles, all that kind of stuff. I've never been good at doing that kind of stuff. I don't I kinda of stay out the newspaper as much as possible. I stay away from, you know, even watching ESPN and stuff like that. But, um, you know, I mean, there's plays that obviously stick out, you know, so far in my career that more than others, you know, uh, that's that's the the play you're talking about is a play that I know sticks out in the minds of, you know, Charger fans and people that have followed the Chargers. I mean, uh, I'm not really too concerned about looking to the past because, uh, you know, looking at the past, there's nothing that I've uh, that I've done right now that that I'm content with. You know, I'll, I'm still hungry. Uh, you know, and I'm I'm not satisfied with uh, where I am individually or 
where the Chargers are as a team. So, and that's kind of then that's kind of how everyone is, and we're all about taking care of today. So all those uh, all the plays of the past really don't matter. It's all about what what's the next play that we're gonna make. What's the next big next big play? You know, uh, someone's gonna make on our team, and that's the only thing that really matters at the end of the day. Yo, what's up, man? It's your boy, Sirius, again. Um, I got an email from a buddy of mine who's a huge Charger fan. Um, what can you tell us on um, the rehabilitation and the status of all-pro uh, San Diego Charger, Louis Castillo? Everything looks like he's going well, you know. Uh, I'm Everyone's planning on him making a, a speedy recovery and – that uh, he'll be joining us very soon. So, I mean, as far as uh, anything more than that, I think you'd have to consult with our doctors or ask Coach Turner. But uh, I've been seeing him. He's been in meetings. He's been uh, taking care of business as usual. Hey, Antonio, this is Brian out here on the West Coast with you. I, I got a question, our first question from the chat room. This is actually from uh, one of our chefs, Dylan. Uh, and you're known as a guy who's maybe a little crazy with the hair designs. He wants to know, what's the next big facial or hair design you got going on? I guess you guys are going to have to watch uh, the San Diego, San Diego Charger game this week and every <laughs> other week after that. <laughs> All right. On a serious note, though, I, I do have a second question here. You know, one of the things that we like to do here at Sports City is we want the fans to get really an idea of not just Antonio Garay, the football player, but Antonio Garay, the person. If you weren't playing football, if football was not an option for you, we know you're a competitive guy. What would Antonio Garay be doing in his life? Right now, I'd be finding a way to make football an option. <laughs> hey, I, I can I tell mean, you what you're doing, Antonio. You'd be playing on that on your family flag football team, probably. Uh, yeah, going taking care of all you chefs over there. That's what I'd probably be doing. And yeah. I mean, that's, I mean that that actually happened to me before, so it's kind of funny that you know people have asked me that. You know, I mean, I was out of football for about 15 months, and all everyone basically uh, alluded to was. Uh, Football was not looking like it was going to be in my uh, my future anymore. But, you know, sometimes people say you can't do it, and sometimes uh, people never think you will be able to do it. But, you know, uh, if there's a will, there's a way. And uh, if you're determined enough, you will find that way. Hey, real quickly, now I know I, know I keep asking you, but I, I got to ask. Let's say when your playing career is over then, what, what's, <laughs> what's Antonio Gray's second – passion once once the football career is over with what are you what are you looking to do with your life what am i willing to do with my life i mean uh right now to be honest with you i'm i'm pretty much taking everything day by day you know uh how can i make myself better today i'm not really uh putting uh a lot of onus and what I want to do uh, in my future after football because right now the only thing that really matters is football. Uh, it might sound a little cliche or whatever. Uh, I think I could say that because I think that I prepared myself uh, properly prior, you know, to uh, entering the NFL. You know, I got my uh, undergrad in marketing and English. I got my master's in secondary education. So as far as me being worried about what I do after football, I think that uh, – you know, I think I'll be okay. You know what I'm saying? And I, as long as I continue to to play football and things go well, you know, other opportunities would, you know, will open. So as far as I'm being worried and thinking about and contemplating what I'll do after football, uh, there's no real need to do that because the only thing that matters, like I said before, is football. Well, Tone, I know we got to get ready to get you up out of here, but I know, you know, we discussed this, that I'm a Lions fan, so – with the young guns in the league, like a Sue and like the – he hasn't really played yet, but like a player like Nick Fairley, have they impressed you or are you paying no mind? I mean, no, what they've done, you know, uh, what what these guys, all these young guys, you know, there's a lot of guys out there, but uh, the ones that you mentioned, they, you know, they played exceptional, you know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, and guys, I mean, that's kind of what this, this league is about. You know, guys are going to – you're gonna have you got eleven guys out there at all times, you know, and every year kind of changes. You know, you don't always have 
you know, one guy might have a big year one year, and then the next year, you know, the media sometimes will be, oh, what happened to him? You know, it's just sometimes other guys on the team happen to make plays. I think sometimes people forget that. But, uh, I mean, those the young guys, the young defensive players that are, that are in this league, you know, all the players in general, I mean, uh, they, they're just getting better and things are getting becoming more uh, competitive, you know. And, uh, I mean, you got to like where, you know, where the NFL is going the direction in which the NFL is going with, with the young talent. But uh, at the same time, you know, you still got guys that have, uh, you know, that have gotten a lot of years under their belt in this league and continue to play at a high level. So, I mean, uh, I, I find, you know, I think every everybody individually, you know what I mean, uh, kind of hears about what other individuals are doing. But at the end of the day, you got to basically play within yourself and make sure that you're pushing yourself to, the, the furthest limits that you could to be the best uh, individual you could be. Because like I said before, sometimes uh, trying to keep up with uh, another individual may kind of hamper you because you probably should be doing better with them, which is than you think you're doing. Like when people get caught up with records and stuff like that, you know, sometimes someone goes, oh, I want to rush it, you know, has a record of, you know, 250 yards. Oh, that's what I want to get. That's a team record. And all of a sudden they get to 249 because they didn't set their uh, their goals higher than what they could have done that particular, that particular day. So I'm all about, uh, you know, goals and, you know, making sure you write them on paper and having a, a visual idea of what you want to grasp. So, you know, that's kind of a little bit of what I'm about. All right, boys, I, I, I'm going to give each, each of you chefs one more question, and then we do got to get uh, Antonio Gray out of here. We appreciate his time. James, you're up. Um, well, this is my last question, um, and, and my, my nephew is actually a I, – I'm sorry, there's some weird feedback going on here. Uh, can anybody uh, do something about that? Oh, okay, cheers. Um, uh, um, uh, my, my nephew's a huge San Diego Chargers fan, um, and, and there's uh, – I, I appreciate your nephew. <laughs> and uh-huh. uh, and – um, and I, I, and he asked me to ask this one question before, uh, before I, I let you go. And he wanted to know, um, what, what would your advice be to young people who want to follow it, not only in your footsteps, but in the footsteps of other NFL players? Um, how, what, what is, other than ridiculously hard work, what's the next, uh, what's the next best advice you can give to, um, to young people who want to be professional athletes? Um, stay strong in adversity. You know, I uh, think uh, no matter how good of a player you are or, you know, how unskilled you are as a player, you know, as long as if you know what you want, you know, if you want to be that player, just because you might not be as good as some other kids, whether you're 10, 12 years old or whatever, high school, you know, I've seen a lot of kids kind of just stick with it and become, you know, better players. And, you know, once you become a better player, you know, I, you know, you kind of hear people find their role or find their niche, you know, and I think a lot of it has to do with adversity and how, you know, an individual uh, conducts themselves in adversity, not just, uh, you know, how, you know, an individual – uh, conducts themselves in adversity, not just, uh, you know, how good they are during good times. And sometimes you see good athletes at younger ages kind of phase out a little bit and guys that weren't as athletic or guys that weren't uh, as skilled, all of a sudden they become, you know, a little, they come a little bit more prosperous than those guys uh, later on just because, you know, they're able to, they know what they want. They want to continue to fight for it. Uh, but at the same time, you find great athletes that uh, do great things throughout their career, and they go through, uh, you know, their own little trials and tribulations and, and adversity. But I think uh, if you're a kid, the biggest thing is adversity, and regardless what an individual thinks about you or thinks about your game, you could always make it better, at, you know what I mean, and just continue to fight through adversity. 
You know, uh, I definitely want to thank you once again for coming on and kicking with us here on Sports City. I never want to leave an interview without this, asking, you know, the callers this. You know, we here at Sports City 